today. I want to sharpen your iron today through the Word of God. Amen. And, and the reason why I titled that Hoe Your Row, if you guys notice, you see all these little invitations sitting on seats. And when I get to the end of this message, we're going to do something really neat. Because you guys are going to understand what the meaning of those are and why they're there. And we're going to incorporate and get your uh, equipping arrows uh, cards in here as well. And we're going to do this today. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that you would take the coal and cleanse my lips, Lord God, that you would set a guard at the door of my mouth, Lord, a watch over my lips, Lord, that I would bring forth your word today with clarity, with power, Lord God, that it would break up the fallow grounds of our hearts, that it would go, out, go forth and accomplish that which you're sending it out to do. Lord, anoint me to preach for a little while today, Father God, and just help me to get out of your way, Jesus, and it's in your name I pray. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Sometimes we've always looked at that as in a bad way when we hear that God is not mocked. That sounds like a pretty searing statement, doesn't it, John? God's not mocked. Well, it is on the one hand that if you want to play games and you want to sow to your flesh and do worldly things, you're going to reap the corruption that comes along with it. Amen. Uh, result either dying, ending up in hell, uh, disease, destruction in your body. Amen. It comes along with all the things of, of sowing to the flesh. But in due season, we'll reap if we faint not. Amen. God doesn't want us to stop doing good. He doesn't want us to stop doing good. How many people have gone out there in the world today, okay, Sister Connie, and you want to share Jesus with somebody? You get to the supermarket, and you start looking around. There's all these people. And just when you think you could say something to somebody, something happens inside, Melissa, that... I can't say that. I'm not going to talk to that person. I'm not going to do that. They could say something mean to me. They might think I'm a nut job. Be not weary in well-doing. Amen. Because every time we let the devil beat us, Jeff, and not talking to that person, every time we felt that little unction from the Spirit, hey, go talk to that person. Go tell them about Jesus. Go invite them to church. And we just grabbed our stuff, paid our bill, and walked out the door. Amen. We've got the opportunity to sow right there. Amen? We've got the opportunity. And we miss it time and time again because the enemy comes at us and he makes us feel uncomfortable. Some of y'all wonder why I'm either all in or all out. When I was young, I was diagnosed with ADHD. Okay? I don't know how I can get anything done. They said I had hyperactivity disorder. I wouldn't be able to learn right. I wouldn't be able to do these things. I wouldn't be able to focus on one thing. Well, God has taken my ADHD and turned it into an incredible ability to multitask across several different things. Amen. So it's not a disease. Amen. I'll tell you, what I needed was, was a little B-E-L-T. Amen. Belt across my backside, a little bit more discipline. Amen. That would have helped me out a lot, praise God, if I'd have been a little bit more obedient and had a little bit more discipline. And praise God, my parents didn't put me on a bunch of pills and drugs when they gave that diagnosis, amen. I, I, I thank God that they didn't do it. But there's something inside of us, and, 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 which is fear, but also the external forces. The enemy don't want you talking to nobody about Jesus. That's why I get them Jesus, Jesus, Jesus t-shirts out there, man. They preach, I don't have to say nothing. Somebody will come up and say, man, I like your t-shirt. And when they do, it's on. It's on. I'm telling them about Jesus. Hey, brother, I got a box full of these in the trunk. You want to buy one? You need one for a family member? You want to talk about Jesus? We got to get bold in our sewing. Listen, th this is good right here, okay? Sewing right here is good. It's good for the church. It keeps us going. It helps keep the ministry going. But we have got to get outside of this church. We have got to get outside the walls of this church. We have got to get our mentality that even if we physically can't, there are things that we can do to support those people that can. Amen. And, and develop those teams of the people. that It's like I don't expect Sister Helen to be running down Monday night passing out invitations. Amen. But I know that Helen and Bob, they like to pray. 
Amen. I know that maybe hell in the Bible say swing by the house. Pastor, you need to carve up on, on some, some, some red velvet cake I got over here for you. Uh, come, come pick up these snacks I got for you and some, of the, and some of these eggs. Listen, whatever your ministry is, no matter how insignificant you think it is, keep sowing, keep sowing, keep sowing. Don't let the devil tell you that anything you're doing is stupid or dumb. Do you know how many times I've not done something in my life, Melissa, because I had a great idea, I could see vision, oh, that would be neat. And then when I went to do it, man, somebody's going to say that's dumb. Or somebody in my life, when I said, hey, let's do this, they told me I was stupid. Well, who's the dummy now? Amen? Who's the dummy now? I got brave for Jesus. I stopped listening to those voices. I stopped listening to those people. Amen? I started running headlong into this thing. What's the worst they can do? Laugh at me? Beat me up? When I was in prison, I'd have been through that. They split my head open with landscaping stones, punched me, had to run a gauntlet every day for Jesus. So that type of stuff don't scare me anymore. I could take a punch in the mouth much better than I could somebody ridiculing me or mocking me for what I want to do for Jesus. And there's a reason why I set this up today, Melissa, to do this message first before I have you get up here and do your testimony. Amen. Because I don't know what's written on that paper or what God's going to do, but I expect by the time you get up here, the Holy Ghost is just going to be rolling through you on this thing. Amen. Because, see, the vision that God has given me is not stupid. It's not dumb. The ideas that God gives you, no matter how ridiculous they may sound, do you know what I saw? One of the most ridiculous ideas that I saw? This nut job come up and said, man, I'm doing ice cream for Jesus. What? What do you mean ice cream for Jesus? Yeah, I got this truck and this trailer, and I got a, uh, I got, I got a, 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 a generator and a little small freezer, and we fill it up with ice cream, man, and I drive into the most impoverished areas that I can find, the, the projects, and pull up in there, and I start calling them all out, come get free ice cream, and tell them about Jesus. Come on, people. Some of y'all have had ideas for years for God. That, see, man, that sounds silly. That sounds stupid. Pull out them silly, stupid ideas and tell the devil to get on down the road somewhere. Amen? And say, God, I'm going to get with some other people that are beside themselves, just like me, that are just dumb enough and crazy enough to believe in a man named Jesus, that God says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. When he gives me a vision, a desire, no matter how silly, then I need to step up and act on it. I said, God, how do we reach those people? Thousands of people. God said, go invite them to church. What? It's not more than that, Lord? You don't mean I have to have five keys to this, ten things to that? No. Just go invite them to church. God, it can't be that simple. It's really that simple. Because it sounds like a silly idea to go out and make up an invitation that nobody knows nothing about me. In sales world, they call this cold calling. Amen. In cold calling, if you don't have an outgoing personality, you will hate sales. Amen. You've got to be all or none. Amen. All or none. But a silly little idea that said, hey, why don't you get a 5 by 7 color card and put what you're about on it and just have people, don't toss candy, just have them walk up. Man, that's my pastor up there preaching. How you doing? I saw you like that. And I'd like to invite you to church. Here we got some candy for the kids and stuff too. Oh, what's your name? No, I don't have to catch up with them. I can stand here and talk for a minute. They got it covered. Amen. You might make that connection. And we're going to get to that. Hoe in your row here in a minute. You guys will understand it better. Amen. Let us not be wearing well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now listen to this. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let them hear. Listen, there are people out there who will shine and excel no matter what they do, and they will always look like the best and the brightest, and they will always do things right. That's your hundredfold person right there. Let me tell you, I'm perfectly content to be a thirtyfold. Amen. I want to be a hundredfold. I'm shooting for a hundred. But if I got thirty, praise God. If I got 60, praise God even more. If I get 100, amen, we're shouting the roof off the place. But don't discount 
your gift and who God has made you to be. Just because somebody else has 10,000 people sitting in their church and, and we average 25 right now, that doesn't bother me at all. Amen? Because God's getting ready to fill these seats. That's what this whole box of invitations and everything is about. To go out and do things differently than what other churches are doing. Instead of just playing music and tossing candy at the people, we're going to preach the gospel. The, the Lord has shown me right there out of the book of Revelation and the book of Leviticus on what to preach. Jesus is talking. Keep my commandments. Give them the Ten Commandments. So we're going to be preaching that whole hour and 45 minutes. Preaching out, preaching out in Ten Commandments and stuff. Amen? And people are going to see Jesus lifted up and magnified and glorified just by using his word. Yeah, we're going to have some music and things, but we are doing away with all the gimmicks. It's going to be Jesus Christ and him crucified. John 14, 32 says this, Brother Jeff, And I, if I be lifted up from this earth, will draw men unto me. Do you know how God rebuilt this church from nothing? John 14, 32, all I did was come in here and preach Jesus. Amen. And then God gave the plan out of Nehemiah, Ezra, and restoration. And here we sit today getting ready to do the biggest event that we've ever done, the biggest outreach that we've ever done. We have been faithful over little. God is getting ready to make us master over much. Amen. So again, it's okay to be 30-fold. You're producing something. You don't want to be the one that's not producing anything. Amen. Because the Bible says the fearful and the unbelieving... They don't have a place in the kingdom of God. If you take what God has given you and you wrap it in a napkin and you go bury it in the ground and so I'll just wait till Jesus comes back and give back to him what he gave me, uh-uh, it don't work like that. Jesus doesn't give us something just for us to hang on to. He gives it to us for us to give it away so that it multiplies, so that it gains. Amen. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. Amen. I said this uh, the last time that I preached. Get ready. If you got areas of your life that you think this vision is silly, or you think this is funny, man, get in there and break up the fallow ground of your heart. If you think it's silly that ain't nothing going to come of this, you're just throwing paper away, you wasted $155 or whatever it was, probably could have got a better deal from Jeff and you know all this other kind of stuff. And, but this is not silly to me. It's a vision that God gave to me that said, this is how I want you to grow your church. I don't want you to do billboards. I don't want you to do TV advertisements. I want you to go connect with human beings. Amen. I want you to look them in their eye. Say, Jesus loves you. I'd like to invite you to church. Yes, People are not cattle. They're not somebody that we market to to try to get the masses in. These are people with lives, with children that they care about, with ministry, vision, and desire, and they need a place to go that has a pastor that understands that other people besides the pastor have a ministry and have a vision and have a calling and that that pastor will get behind them, underneath them, and help build up and help them live out the vision that God has given to them. That's what we do at this church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, you're going to love this, Melissa. Sometimes God comes to us with a vision. That's so big and beyond us that we don't know what we can do. And I'll give an example of that. I was not looking for a pastorship when the call came in. Not at all. I was perfectly content to be Praise Project Ministries, Ministry of Helps, going and helping other pastors and other churches with their music and their sound system. And just, it was always a project, whatever they needed. You know, I could come serve in, in, in whatever capacity. And then one day they came in and said, uh, got a phone because we want you to go be a pastor. And long story short, I ended up here, which is where God wanted me to be. Amen. And we've seen some good fruit since, since I walked through that door. And that's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because I came through the door that no matter how silly of an idea you give me, God, I'm going to do it. They can laugh at me if they want to. Yet here we sit. The lights work. We're ready. We're poised for action. We're ready to go. So break up your heart. If you got doubt and disbelief today, get rid of it. Get it gone. If the devil's on you, if he's laughing at you, if he's mocking at you, get out of here, devil. The Bible says, all they that call upon the name of the Lord shall not be ashamed. Amen. Get behind me. i got a job to do. Check this out. Just like with me, I was not looking for a pastorship when it came, bro, Joel. Amen. Pretty big deal, wasn't it, Melissa? For somebody like me, for somebody to come up and say, here, X crackhead, and I say X, amen, because God changes things, amen. He said, we want you to be a pastor. I didn't know what to do. 
I'm going to give you, but this is what I did do. God said, don't be afraid. Don't worry. I'll lead and I'll guide you. Just stick to my word. Don't deviate and you'll be okay. I'll take care of the rest. So I'm going to share this story about somebody else that had something like this put upon them, a vision where somebody came with a vision that they did not have. Amen. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Let me tell you, Some of y'all got the favor of God on your life. And you don't recognize it, you don't know it, or you have not taken advantage of it the way that you should have. Amen. All my life, even in my sin and in my mess, for whatever reason, God has showed me favor above other people in situations and circumstances. I could go into time after time again where I caught break after break after break that they should have just, they should have crucified me. But God had grace and mercy on me. For whatever reason, God's favor was and is on my life. For some of y'all, God's favor was and is on your life. And I want you to listen to this today, amen, because God has been speaking to some of y'all, amen. And he's asked you to do things. And by asking you, do I mean that an angel showed up and spoke to you verbally? No. But you woke up from the middle of a dream like, well, I saw that so perfect, God. Man, I saw the house of God full. I saw this vision. Or, hey, God, I got a desire. Let's, man, I'd like to do some printing. Let's go buy a print shop for Jesus. Let's just out of the blue. But by faith. Amen. You guys did that by faith. Last time I checked, I, I kind of know your all situation with the kids. You ain't got millions of dollars sitting in the bank that you could go pull from. You all stepped out in faith when you did this. And ironically enough, when they stepped out in faith and did that, guess who printed up our last round of, of tithe envelopes? Jeff did it out there in his shop. A man had subcontracted that. So what I'm saying is this. No matter how silly or how small you think it is, God has given you a vision and a dream because His favor is on your life. And if His favor is on your life, He wants you to step out and do something with it. Even if it's bigger and beyond you. Man, I don't have any of those qualifications. Do you know what qualifications I had coming in this place? I don't have seminary school and all that kind of, kind of stuff. God stuck me in prison for six years and said, here's my word, read it, learn it, memorize it. Then I was stupid and got out and fell down and backslid. But God's word held true. He raised me up in the way that I should go. And now that I'm older, he got a hold of me, and I'm not going to depart from that thing. Amen? But once you understand, Mary didn't know that she was blessed among women until God showed up and told her she was. Well, let me tell you today, Brother Bob, you are blessed. You are highly favored. Amen? How many situations did you walk out of that you saw so many others didn't? You know I'm talking real stuff. Okay? We've all been there. We've seen some things like that. Amen? And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation should this be. Even Mary, the mother of God, amen, had doubts. Whoa! Wait, what's going on? What do you mean I'm highly favored? What's coming next? See, he didn't tell her what was getting ready to come. He just said, hey, Brother Jeff, God's got a calling on your life. He's got an anointing for you and your family. Amen? So there's the first part. Well, wait a second. What do you mean, God? What are you talking about? Amen? You ever get that way? You feel that way sometimes, Melissa? Hey, that crazy loudmouth pastor called me and said, come give my testimony. Man, I don't know what to do. Scott's a little crazy. Amen? But you're highly favored. God has put favor on your life. He told me to have you come and give your testimony because there's power. This equipping arrows. Your vision is part of the bigger vision. Even if you don't have, even if you don't see what I see, that's okay. Because God only might have you operating here for this, for somebody else to come along. Amen. That's going to see what I see. Amen. And maybe one day you'll see what I see. And God will completely flip things around and then suddenly there's money and all this other stuff coming in where 
wait a second here, but listen, let's, let's pay you X amount of dollars a year to come in here and, and just be a mom full time and be around kids, you know, those type of things. That, that can happen, amen? That could happen. That could happen. I don't know if that's your vision, that's your desire, where you want to go. You might say, I'm done with kids. After this round, I'm through, you know? Lucas and, and him, they, 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 they gave me a run for my money. I'm done. But I, but I don't know. But what I'm saying is this. Be open. When God comes and speaks to you and he puts people of big vision around you, listen. Listen to what he's saying. Because, number one, you're highly favored, Melissa, you and your family. It's like the rest of these people in here are. Praise God. So the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And I want you to hear this because this is what God says in Romans for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that wills, nor of him that runs, but of God that shows mercy. If God has put a call on your life today, get up and do something with it. Run while you still have the favor of God on your life with it. Amen. And he said to Mary, And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. The angel told her at that point what it was. He named the seed, didn't he, Jeff? He named the seed. He named it Jesus. It was a seed. And there's a reason why I'm using this example and talking about reaping and sowing and God not being mocked of what we're getting ready to do. And, she, and he told her, he said, He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall have no end. And he's telling this to a little country girl whose life, her whole life, had been underneath Roman oppression. Wait, he's going to come and he's going to do all these things? Okay. But she had faith. She believed. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Hey, tell me how this is going to happen. Amen. Well, let me tell you how this is going to happen, Melissa. Jeff, all this stuff. Your vision, just with your equipping errors, your every other week, how this, how this is going to happen. How it's going to happen that you're going to have more families coming at you than you know what to do with and say, Scott, I need help. Amen. What did you do to me? Praise God. He, and this is how it is. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the high shall overshadow you. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. How are you going to get this done, people? The Holy Spirit is going to come on you. You're going to get power. Amen. The minute that you say yes to God, just like that night, that last night of drug abuse and use that I had when the Holy Spirit showed up, said, Because as I am, so are you in this world. And I said, I don't look nothing like Jesus. How can that happen? Amen. And he said it to me again, and finally I listened, and I said, yes, Lord, I don't look anything like Jesus. But let me tell you, he set me free, and I look a whole lot more like Jesus today than I did all them years ago when I had that dope pipe and all that mess in my hand. Why? Because I believed. God said, i got a plan and a purpose for your life that you're going to look like me, walk like me, talk like me, do the works that I've done. Amen. Have an honorable life, live a life worthy of the calling of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So right now, we're going to do something. We're going to name our seed. So some of y'all have seen what we got laying down there, amen? Get ready, Melissa, you're up next. So I'm anointing these in the name of Jesus. And I was here on Friday. Was it Friday, Friday or Thursday? Whatever night I come in with art, I come in early. But I asked God for wisdom. What do I do? Show me, Lord. How do these seeds work? And he brought back John and Marcia. Sharpen your hoe. And I started thinking, how do I hoe my row? God walked me right over to this side of the church. And I see rows. 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 So I come along with a seed. This is for the husband and wife that have lost children, whose children won't come to church for whatever reason. This is for them. For that single mother that made a mistake, nobody else will talk to her. Amen. Doesn't have any place to go. Where do I go? I've got a seed. I'm going to plant her right here. 
Pastor, we're people of vision. We have a ministry every place we go. We, we want to share. We want to do stuff. We just seem to get shut down. Nobody's really caught hold of our vision. It's for those people that have that vision, a place for them to come to get raised up. This is for that drug addict that just can't seem to get clean. But somebody put an invitation in their hand that day and said, come. This is for grandchildren to be raised in the admonition of the Lord. That's the type of seed that I want to plant. This is for the husband and wife that are struggling that don't know if their marriage is going to continue. But like I said earlier, I'm going to put them right here in front of people that have 51 and 58 years of marriage. I'm going to plant them right here. This is for the person that got church hurt. This is for the person maybe that I hurt somewhere along the way. The God that you would bring them back. Are you kind of getting the picture, people? Are you kind of getting the picture? You reap what you sow. If you don't have an expectation and you're not calling out that seed, how are you going to have a harvest? Amen. This is for that little lonely old lady that ain't got no place to go to come and get good fellowship. This is for that family whose wife only knows how to cook out of the microwave. Amen. Where I could come on Sunday and get a good home-cooked meal and maybe take my wife or, hey, husbands can learn this too, take them someplace with some really good cooks that'll show them something. Amen. Jeff and Melissa, if I could get you all to come up today.